city! 207 XAD. After death. A city that shouldn't exist. A tax haven where corporations and criminals, empires reign supreme. In this place, all humans' life has been infected with nanomachines. Okay, there's a corrupt government laws that are obeyed. You know, that kind of thing. A land so far in the future. Um, uh, yeah, super sad. And it's quality of life for the non-powerful decrease at an alarming rate. For many, this can be overwhelming. Some devote themselves to jobs, others they just want to escape their pain. I'm just, abbrevi just shortening all of this because, you know. But for many of them, the answer lies at, at the bottom. On a small road just seconds away from the main street, there's somewhere near the slums, you'll find Valhalla, the bar that we are going to be at while I serve up some drinks and we discover a better and awesome storyline. It's a small oasis in the middle of the concrete desert, a fountain of spirits waiting for tired souls. Welcome to day five. You have no notifications or reminders. Jill bought what she wanted and she's pleased with herself. She will surely focus at work. You can now use nano camo to customize your room. I only have six dollars. Okay, let's go to work. We gotta make back our money that we spent. So Saturday, December 17th? I didn't read that fast enough. So good evening, says Jill. Huh? I didn't expect you today. I was waiting for you to call and say you wouldn't be coming or something. Things at the Apollo Bank are getting ugly, so that means more people will be looking for a drink. <sighs> you can take a break, you know. You're quite the hard worker. And the streets are not exactly safe right now. Yeah, they've never been when you get down to it. And besides, I can't afford to not come with the bar closing soon. So I wonder if any bars have used impending closures as a means of getting their boys to work. Seems like a total- seems like the total opposite would happen. Not to mention I get bored out of my brains in my apartment so I'd rather come here anyways. What did he say? Oh, nothing important. Gil isn't back yet, is he? Nope, I wouldn't worry too much about him though. Wait, but we are worried about him. Pretty sure he's part of this, like, situation. He's very suspicious. But we don't know. Well, if you say so, that girl's still here? Um, yep, she was sleeping so peacefully I felt bad about waking her up. So would you mind doing that for me? Actually, I do mind, but you're the boss. It's kind of my fault she's here in the first place. Yeah, sorry about that. So, ahem. <clears throat> hey, young lady, sleep around- sleep another hour and we'll have to start charging you a motel fee. Streamer Chan. What a rah. Oh my fucking god. Forgot about her. Okay. Streamer Chan. Uh, where am I? Oh, right. Ah, the shoddy downtown bar. Let's see. All my gear in place. And neither my pants nor my uh, panties, shirt, or bra have been displaced. Oh, it's the flat bartender. Good morning. Um, yeah, good evening. Evening? Oh well, it's the best night, or er, day of sleep I've had in quite a long time. Sorry for all the trouble I may have caused you today or last night. Yeah, don't worry, girl. You're so nice, flat bartender. Thanks for taking care of me. Bye. Hmm. So hello guys and gals, streaming chance back in action with her batteries reloaded. Ah, the moon, it burns. I feel, oh, I feel like I just unleashed something terrible onto the world. Ah, oh, come on, says the boss. It's not that bad. Say, what's this bottle? A client gave it to me yesterday. A gift of sorts, I'm guessing. Oh, cool. It's some sort of rum. Rum, nice. Want me to serve you a bit of it? Yes, for sure. Go to the bottle drinks tab and drag it to the shaker before mixing. Drag it to the shaker before mixing. Okay, so go to bottle drinks, rum, and then mix it. 
some rum. So you just shake it, like... That's it? Alright! I'm gonna enjoy this in my office, thank you. Yeah. Anytime. Okay, then... So add songs. So let's um, add some good old songs. I don't know what kind of songs I want to add. Your love is a drug. Oops. I guess this should be good. <laughs> Let's go. It is time to serve, mix, and change lives. What? Wait, that's not how it goes. <sighs> no one here to retort. Man, it feels lonely without Gil here. I just hope the relentlessness in the world in the streets doesn't lead to dangerous or weird types coming in here. I think it's a floating brain. Cool. Oh, good, good evening. Holy shit, that was a record breaking jinx. Welcome to the Hollow. What can I get you? I'll have a blue fairy. Don't make a joke about becoming real. Don't make a joke about becoming real. On it. Okay, let's give this um, brain a blue fairy. So. So, four aldehyde. So, one, two, three, four. One flang, flangeride, and optical care caramel trine. Let's get him fucked up. <laughs> um, all aged and mixed. What? How did I fuck that up? Four aldehyde. One. Oh, I forgot a plan. One, two, three, four aldehyde, one flan, optional caramel trion. You know what? Let's maybe not get him drunk first. Let's see what he has to say. Aged and mixed. Blue fairy. Serve it. There you go. Oh, nice. Yeah. This is my thing. So, um, how are you gonna. Oh, you can grab stuff. Should have figured as much. But can you, like, drink stuff? I need to hello lot of I still have the same system as all of them do. Um, can I ask you something, or uh, miss? A little call me Taylor. Just Taylor. And yes, a cutie like you can ask me anything. Um, okay, Taylor. You have to be the first person I've met that didn't go, okay, just Taylor. Oh wait, I screwed up the voice. Yeah. Nah, too easy. You are a brain in a jar, right? I'm, not sh I'm, I'm sure not a hologram of that, I'm sure. Yep, I'm a bonafide human brain in jar. So, how? Why? What? Does my handsomeness make you speechless? You're not something a girl sees every day, and that's saying quite a bit in these parts. Oh, Aurora, fear not, but I have a speech prepared for this situation. You have a speech? You're seeing one of the five great living bottled brains in the world. We are brains living in conditions that allow us to exist as any other humanoid creature. All while computers in our jar scan our activities. In a slow but steady manner, we are helping the world understand the inner workings of nature's most complex computer. I'm guessing you prepared that after being asked the same question too many times? Not out of aspiration or anything like that, mind you. I just wanted to have something thoughtful prepared. Look, I even have a couple of pamphlets with me. You want one? Yeah, um, sure. So what brings you to our world's five- Okay, what brings one of our world's five brains in jars to this place, though? Oh, I'm from around here, actually. I just wanted to take a walk for the first time in quite a bit of time. Um, have you come here before? Sadly, no, otherwise I remember a cute face like yours. Speaking of which, can I have your name? Um, it's Jill. Jill? Oh, that's a real- cute name. Thank you. Say, weren't you scared of going outside today with the, all the commotion going on? Um, it didn't stop you from coming here either, did it? Yeah, I guess you're right. 
It's gonna take more than cryptic, but um, ominous news to stop me. Wow, you're awfully energetic. Did you know that? Sorry, does that bother you? No, no, no. Just I figured a brain in a jar wouldn't be so happy. While I was alive, my body got to a point where there wasn't much I could do. This new state of existence allows me to accomplish more than I could ever before. Plus, I'm doing something that'll help people in the long run. Wouldn't you be happy? I I wonder. Do you want to make me happy, Jill? Depends on what it takes. Don't worry, just give me a beer. Alright, yeah, um, make you happy then. Let's give him a beer. Come on, Aldehyde. Should we get him a big beer? No. One, two, three, four. I kinda wanna- I wanna make him a big beer. One Aldehyde, two Thrawn, one Powder, two Flame, four K. Um, all mixed. Serve. Here is a beer! Oh yes, no matter what happens, beer is always good. It's interesting, though. Just yesterday I was talking to a client about brain uploads. Oh, really? You were? Yeah, we were talking about how even if you upload your brain here, you'd still be here. Yeah, I don't know. I thought about that, too. Do you think the you in the cybernetic environment would feel like she was indeed transferred? Like, would she remember anything? Like, waking up someplace else and so on? Interesting question. I was actually thinking earlier about being able to transfer someone's brain into a Lilum. Oh, one of the brains is being used in such an experience, actually, they can make a functional Lilum. Unfortunately, the wiring and other stuff makes it look more creepy and everything. They aren't for transferring his identity or anything, though, just wiring him to a body. Oh, you think someone would rather do that than floating around exposed in a jar? I have to admit, the whole brain thing does look a little creepy. But the body I'm telling you, oh, what the body I'm telling you about is just uncanny looking. Speaking of uncanny, how did you feel when you saw yourself like this for the first time? Oh, you're a little, oh, it was quite a shock actually. It didn't last too long though, I never felt too attached to my body. Later in my life, that was almost literal. You know what the downside to this body is? You can't get drunk. Oh, if you want to call that a downside. If you want to drink alcohol for the taste, there are many alternatives. Well, drunkenness will part is part of the whole experience. Why though? Lilum can get drunk with her with no problem. A Lilum can get drunk. Yeah, but in their case, they their brains a computer attached to their body. Getting drunk causes their brains to reduce the input speed to their bodies. Depending on the model, their drunk subroutine might throw in a different behavior cycle. Even. It's hard to get drunk when the whole point of you being in a jar is figuring exactly how you work. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hey, Jill! Oh, it's Elma. Just- oh, Elma? What's a courtesy one would expect from the Flavian Fla bar staff? Welcome to Valhalla, what can I get you? Happy? Not when you put it that way! Well, hello there, beautiful. Hmm? Wow! Whoa, you hurt my feelings with that, darling. Um, yeah, sorry you don't see talking dismembered brains every day. I mean, I did work a summer in Lilla maintenance, but even then, those were talking heads. Oh, don't even worry about it. At least you're not running or fainting. Your name is Elma, right? I'm Taylor. Nice to meet you, Taylor. Say, Elma, can I buy you a drink? Sorry, I only take people who are at least 50% organic and have at least one face. Oh, I know. Just what to stri strive for then. Just kidding. I'll make me. It'll make me happy to make you happy by buying you a drink. Does that bother you? I guess if Jill's the bartender, I don't have a problem with her doing that. Awesome. I'll pay for your next drink then. What will you have? Ha, Alma. What's up? What will you have? Yeah, I'll have a coal belt velvet. And you, Taylor? Taylor? And you? Wait, what? I'm fine, actually. You're gonna have me drink alone? I don't wanna drink that much. Okay, then. Let's make a callback velvet. Straight from Taylor to Elma. Um, I'm 
all the elders. So it's two aldehyde, three fran, and five caramel shrine. One, two, three, four, five. Let's make it a big one. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. On the rocks, ice, and mixed. Here's your drink! Hope you enjoy it. You know, you've been nicer to me these past minutes than at least three guys have been in the last year. Well, judging from the way you talk, I'm guessing you've been client here for a while now, right? Yeah, only about half a year or so, if memory serves right. Really? One would think it's been longer. Ah, <sighs> it feels like it's been longer. Oh, shut up. You let me know it. So you just started coming here and that was it? Well, the first time I came here, the other guy, speaking of which, where's Pablo? Gillian. Archimedes. Dunno. Advert adventuring or something. Anyways, the other guy served me the first time I came here. Nothing unusual there. The next time I showed up, Jill here, here was the one serving, and I don't know, I feel like she just gets me. There's this chemistry. We click. <laughs> we click, she says as we're clicking through this entire game. The fact that I feel more chemistry with her than many people is kind of sad, though. Well, it's always good to see a nice friendship. Sorry, at least getting late and I've gotta go. I'll leave you two lovely ladies low. See ya! <sighs> Bye. Yeah, please come again. Yeah, well that tailor sure was nice. A bit weird at first, though. Apparently one of his five brains being studied by scientists or something. There's a summary of it in this pamphlet. Huh, let's see. Oh yeah, I've heard of them before. I can't believe I actually met one. Let's see, Alma. How many people are there in your family? Just curious. Well, aside from my mom and dad, we're five si sorry, four sisters and one brother. Funnily enough, we all have names that start with the first five letters in the alphabet. So you're the oldest one? No, I'm the middle child. You're the middle kid, but your name starts with A? Don't think too much about it. I never said the order reflected our ages. My sister Charletta's the eldest one. Then there's Di Diana just before me. So CDA. CDAE. And then Ava lives at the bottom, lies Bebs. Bella. I'm sorry, the youngest one is Bernardo. So you've never been alone, I'm guessing. Can't complain about that, I guess. It helps that we were never five in the same house. By the time Evita and Bernie were born, Diana and Charletta has already moved. Wait, what? Evita and Bernie? Bernardo? Oh, that's probably how they like... Yeah. Speaking of family, today I came because I needed a break from everything that's been going on with them. Do you live with them? No, but Evita and Bernie do. Not to mention, I visit them almost every day. Anyways, my second eldest sister, Diana, Diana, just separated from her husband. It's not even been a week, but she's already got some other guy in her bed. She left her kid with her husband's parent and pretty much forgot about them. Never mind the fact that I need to go to school and all that. Damn. Yeah, her life has always been messy, but these days she's really making it big. She wants time for herself to live her life. She don't think that when she married the guy- Aha! She didn't think about that when she was married at 20. She didn't think about that when marrying a guy she had only known for like three months. Well, you should um, take your own advice. Hey, I'd never marry someone who could catch my attention so quickly, okay? Sure, there's that one time when it almost happened, but I blame the damn stadium kiss cam. Um, kiss cam? I was going out with a guy in my middle my little sister introduced me to, since he was her friend's brother or something. We went off a couple times and he invited me to a basketball game. The mood was nice and then later the kiss cam focused on us and instead of kissing me he proposed. I almost got caught in the mood and accepted. Huh. So I take it you rejected him in a stadium on the fucking kiss cam. We went out for like three weeks. I don't know, maybe he wanted to get in my pants with the old sex on the wedding night line. But I honest to god can't understand why I thought it would be a good idea. Well, that sounds too convoluted, you know? Proposing and waiting for the wedding night just for sex? 
Never underestimate the lengths a man is willing to go to get you in their bed. I've never... I've seen more convoluted plots over the years. I'm feeling tempted to ask, but I'll pass. You want anything else? Uh, what's that bottle? Um, it's some rum a client gave me yesterday. A gift? What did you do? A good service, I'm guessing. Cassie. Uh, wait, what? Interesting name. What does it mean? Cass. Cassie. Keys. I don't know what that word is. The name of the chief. Tame. Chieftain in some native tribes? I see. Do you want me to serve you some of this? I'll pass. I don't have too many good memories where rum's involved. Get me a fringe weaver instead, will you? Alright. I wonder what's up with her and rum. But anyways, let's give her a fringe weaver. So let's go into... by name. Wow. So much alcohol. Eldehyde and nine caramel child. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I want to make a small one because I don't want her to get like drunk. But I wanted to make it big because I'm a good friend. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, aged and mixed. One aldehyde, two aldehyde, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not gonna give her some rum. <laughs> oh, okay, I can't get her that drunk. Okay, you know what? I can't. I can't. I'm a good friend. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All aged and mixed. One fringe weaver. What kind of memories do you have with rum? <sighs> Nothing you need to worry about. Okay. Alright, now it's my turn to ask questions. Okay, as long as you're gonna walk out of here safe, because I don't want you to get fucked up. About what? So what kind of family is your family? Well, I'm the only child. My mom and dad split. My mom is a violinist, so she was always away from home with the orchestra. I spent most of my time with my dad, my aunts, and my grandpa. Aside from that, I'd say my childhood was quite uneventful. Ha, huh, didn't you get something like your mom's artistic vein or something? Well, I played the violin until I was like 16. So what made you stop? I don't know, I just kind of said that's it when they'd stopped. What about cousins or the rest of your family? I see very little of them actually. Mainly because my dad moved away from most of them. Most of my mom's family live in France to boot. So your mom's French? Mm-hmm. Can you speak French? Mon et plan d'angelais. Ooh, what does that mean? Rubbish? I don't know, I can't speak French. I did try though, but college started and I stopped taking classes. Funny thing, I actually have a cousin from my mom's side that lives close by. But you'll be hard pressed to make me spot him in a crowd. Uh, you're kinda lucky, you know. All my mom's side of the family lives here. The chances of me meeting someone I'm related to on the streets are ridiculously high. Um, but yeah, that's the primary primer on my family. Nothing too interesting, sad blue. Your mom's a French violinist, and you call that uninteresting? I'm wondering if your family has ever made a fuss about you being a hacker. Hacker makes it sound too exotic. It's like if I called you a mixologist. Oh yeah, please don't ever. Sounds like something somebody would say to make bartenders sound sophisticated. Huh, see? I mean, hacker is a good way to summarize it, but it's not the best. I'm a security consultant. People want to find flaws in the security of their systems, and I do my best to pinpoint where it breaks. Be it Glitch City or anywhere else in the world, they need security. Wonder Woman. You're told quite a few stories about cracking databases to retrieve info like some sort of mercenary, though. Well, that doesn't change the fact that hacker is not the best term to use. It makes the whole thing sound illegal when it it's actually an honest job. Don't you tell me you once secured some incriminating fix from a guy's cell phone? An almost honest job. Sheesh. 
So what made you become a hacker, by the way? Well, I've always been a sucker for puzzles. Even as a kid, I always had a Sudoku or crossword with me. But at some point, they started feeling kind of samey. So when I started college, I took a course in system security. I felt like the kind of puzzle I was looking for. I mean, there are all kinds of things involved in breaching net security. You need to attack the stuff from different angles. And it's something that's always evolving. The whole point of everything is to strengthen security. Every time you think you've got the gift, gist of it, they change everything. So it's kind of like an always evolving puzzle. A puzzle I help make harder at that. Huh. I didn't really think about it that way. It is less action-y um, than what the movies make it up to be, though. No real-time frantic typing, nothing like that. Still, seeing my code break through something, it's an amazing feeling. Will you have anything else? Ah, a classy drink. Any classy drink. Well, here goes nothing. She wants a classy drink. By type, let's look at the class. Grantini? Oh, she likes these. I want to make her a Brantini, because I like them. I'm going to make her a Brantini. So six aldehyde, one, two, three, four, five, six. Three powder delta, one, two, three. And one carmatrine. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. Ah, oh, shit, I fucked up. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Um, all aged and mixed. Brantini. So it's low alcohol, lots of flavor. So I don't want her to be sick, because she's technically our friend. And not a bad person. We only get bad people drunk, because we don't like them. We want them to walk out of here just regretting their decisions. Bravo! You made me very happy. Woohoo, I guess. You know, sometimes I feel like you know me better than all the guys I've been with. Well, I feel compelled to ask you how many guys you've been with. If we're talking about serious, long-lasting relationships, just a handful. Casual dating and one-night stands, on the other hand. Why do that? Why go through so many people? Hey, it's not like I take every guy I see to bed. Who do you take me for? Well, you know what I mean, Elma. <sighs> yeah, yeah. That's like something I don't have an answer to, actually. Maybe I'm just romantic that loves having someone to cuddle with. Maybe I just get lonely. Maybe there's a deep-seated psychological reason behind it all. Maybe I'm just horny. Whatever the case, I just kind of feel like it's a quest I shouldn't give up on yet. Well, it's not like I'm too different. Until recently, I had- I too had a streak of one-night stands. No way, Jill? Really? What made you stop? Well, reasons. What is it? Tell me. Maybe later. It's time for my break. Come with me. Huh? Why can't I stay here for, away from the cold? Well, I don't trust you. You could fit a bottle between those tits of yours and nobody would know. So why not just say, please come with me and let's and let's keep talking at the back of the bar. You got the message. Now come. Guide me then. Boss, I'm taking a break. Call me if anyone comes in. So sure. We did it. We're now on break. Nothing too eventful happened. Brain came in. That was interesting. So let's save. They want me to save, so I will save. It's now safe to keep on playing. Cold, cold, cold. Um... So let's change the songs. Let's, I want more like chill songs, so... Digital Drive sounds really- ooh, Dusk sounds nice. Those who dwell in the shadows sound scary too. Base of Titans. Let's do Base of Titans. Let's go! Well, it sure is chilly out there. Yeah, but it's kind of refreshing. The hobo out there seems like a nice guy. Billy Vine? Yeah, he's a cool guy. Really respectful. 
apparently got into some legal trouble, and that's why he's like that. Oh, really? He could also just be a very nice crackhead, though. So, are you gonna tell me? What? Why did you stop having all those one-night stands? Well, I started working here. I don't know, after I started working here, I felt like I don't need to do that anymore. Maybe I was just lonely? Oh, that's so cute. I also got fed up with everyone complaining about me smoking on the bed. You're gonna burn... <sighs> You're gonna burn the bed with that. Yeah, yeah. If you ever need a hug, just let me know. You don't need one night stands for that. <sighs> so you left me thinking though, what's your thing, your fetish? You strike me as a kind to have an overpower fetish of sorts. You wanna feel totally swayed by someone, have consensual yet forceful sex with your partner. Dot, dot, dot. Did I hit a bullseye? You have quite the imagination, girl. Honey, some service here. I'm here. Don't scream. Oh ho! You're the one hanging at the back of the bar. What kind of stuff were you doing? Huh, just talking. Is that what they call it these days? So what do you want? Something soft, something sweet. No alcohol, please. Wouldn't it be the same if you just grabbed a soda from the vending machine? But I like you! Do you like dis- Do you like- Dislike my presence so much? Um, sweet and non-alcoholic you say, alright! Okay, so, bite tight. Girly? No, flavor. Sweet. You want a blue fairy bee? Yes. Blue fairy technically would be it. So let's... Or Sparkle Star. Maybe something... What's the cheapest one? 150... 150... 170. Let's do a Sugar Rush. Let's do Aldehyde. Two Aldehyde. One, two, and one powder delta. Crap. One, two, one. I don't know. But I wanted something to more, because it was two aldehyde and one powder. It's like really small. You know? I just really sparkle star, aldehyde powder delta, two aldehyde powder delta. Let's do four, this one. Or this one, fluffy dreams nice too. Let's do that one, fluffy dreams. A couple of, of these will make your tongue feel velvety, more of them will make you sleepy soundly, sleeping soundly. Maybe I don't want to make her sleep, though. I don't know. <laughs> Why does it matter? Let's just... Let's give her a blue fairy. Just fuck it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, one, or two. Oh, we can make it really big. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then A, B, P, F. And then two. Um, all age and mix. Okay, apparently that's not good. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. All aged and mixed. A blue fairy. Here, like you ask. See? You don't get this kind of treatment from vending machines, unless you're Lawrence. But he has this weird idea that good service is the same as selling lukewarm canned cola. Lawrence? A friend of mine who's a vending machine. Oh. Oh, how un how impolite of me, huh? I'm I'm lovely and my name's Dorothy. Dorothy Hayes, nice to meet you. Oh, I'm Elma, the pleasure's mine. Dorothy, you say? I yep, why? Nothing, I guess I've heard about you before. Really? What kind of stuff? Tell me. Mostly about your pluckiness. 
Ah, uh, and here I was thinking it was because I'm a sex worker. So, hey, I take pride in my job. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. Isn't it dangerous? I know how to take care of myself. Thank you very much. Where do you work, Alma? I'm a hacker. Really? A full-fledged hacker? Not the type you see the computer logged into some account and says they're hacking, right? Ah, huh, no, no, of course not. I've always been curious about being a hacker, like, and how that works. Do you just stare typing really fast while waiting for something to happen? Ah, oh, no. I can't explain, but I don't know if you'll get it. We we don't know until we try, right? Last time I said that I had... Uh, last time I said that I had to jam the plastic replica of the hollow gin light bulb up a grown man's ass. It was a success! Ahem. <clears throat> Okay then, let me try to explain in general how it works. Let's say I have, a, have to retrieve information from a company's database. Alright. First I do some research on the target. OS, servers, how the information is stored, and all that. There have been a couple occasions where I had to go in blinds, but they're the ex exception rather than the rule. First, I secure things from my side. I start work behind proxies, websites, and through other vul vulnerable computers I find on the way. Huh. After that, I start testing the networks. I go through the basic protocols, try known exploits as long as they don't trigger any alarm. Once I've tested the ground, the fun starts. I go through all the security protocols and look to bypass them. Sometimes I have to look deeper into the code for the password itself. I see. Then, when I'm finally in, I go and retrieve your user privileges. After that, I go and try to become a super user and get what I need. So, how do you do that? Well, there's a couple of ways. I can use a pre-made program to hack into an already existing account. I can use info someone already gave me, but the usual way is using a buffer of the flow. Buff? What happened next? What happened next? I create a backdoor in the system before leaving and covering my tracks. I can't! I can't handle anymore! Alma, hack me! Hack me like you never hacked anything before! Huh? Make my buffer overflow! Create a backdoor! Escalate your user privileges! Find flaws in my security! Huh? Sorry, I got carried away. Oh shit, what happened? Have you seen those movies or books where a couple does something like paint a picture or cook? But they, they make it sound like they're having sex instead? Uh, suggestive scenes, yeah. Well, that whole thing was kind of like that for me. Really? I guess humans don't really get it because their minds didn't upload to networks or anything. But trust me, if you record yourselves giving a really detailed explanation in a really sexy voice, you'd make millions. Porn millions are an exploited market. Ah, oh, I see. Ah, oh, looks like my ride is here. Your ride? Yep, my brother-in-law came to look for me. Is it alright to ask that from him? It's okay, I've known him since preschool. It's just so happened that he got married to my sister. Hey Dorothy, you need a ride? Can you drop me off by 3rd Street? Sure, it's on the way. Yay, I'll take your offer then. Bye honey. Yeah, later Jill. See you guys. Wow, that was a fun time. Take care. The streets seem noisy. Oh, a client. Hello, welcome to Paula. What can I get? Such a small yet comfortable place. Truly an oasis of spiritual drinks in the midst of the suburban desert. A place where lost and corrupt souls can gather to forget their troubles for a while. A nest where everyone come from the most pathetic scum to the bellest trash junkie can just sit to talk, kill their insides. Truly a real persona non grata. The, well, that's Latin for mysterious place, by the way. I'm so smart and with my philosophy. Alright, we got ourselves a persona non grata here. So what do you what will you have then? Seventeen. Excuse me? It says seventeen. Seven plus T. What does that mean? What does it mean to you? Just wanna be sure seventeen is a drink you want, right? Only if you want it to be. What the hell does that mean? Seventeen? Let's go! This must be a... This has to be like a riddle. Hmm... 
17. 7 plus teen. Maybe there's 17 stuff inside of it. 17. Karma trying? If I type classy drinks, he's, he's kind of classy. Four, five, six, seven. Oh my gosh. Mercury glass, classy drinks. Or even the bottle. Grandpa booze, spliced tea. A fedora. With plump perfume and a plum. I don't know what they want. Okay, I have to think about it. Classy. What does 17 mean? So maybe one and seven. <laughs> Seventeen. Anything you can. Classic drinks, baby. Frothy water sounds cool. One aldehyde. PG rated shows. Favorite beer. What the hell? Classic drinks, classy uh, promo drinks. Maybe 17's from the drink list. Ooh, that is a good, oh my gosh, that's good. Okay, so let's start at number one. One, two, three, four. Oh, it says it at the bottom there. That's awkward. Let's do this one. Okay, so the piano man. Wow, okay, that is really smart. I feel like, I feel like we're, we gotta be right now. So, one, two, three aldehyde, three bronston, five powder delta, one, two, three, four, five, five bland, one, two, three, four, five, three caramel trine, one, two, three. On the rocks and mixed. Piano man! Serve it! Ooh, is this the 17? Um, it isn't. You said 17 would only be related to drink if I thought it was, and I thought it isn't. Oh, you subverted my expectations by taking me s literally sneaky. What brings you here? Oh, sorry, what brings you here, mister? I'm Armandio. Vilgelio Armandio. See, I introduced myself using Asian author because that's a very lot better polite. Right. And so I came here looking for a otherworldly experience. I was passing by and I saw this place it was got a Bahala. You see, I'm very classic. I want to see the souls of resting warriors. The wounded spirits, the noble souls. I just accidentally skipped one. Well, we have some arcade machines in the corner. Oh, no, 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 no. You're taking me too literally. You see, I'm being poetic. I'm giving myself a mystical air of mundane affair. I wanted to see drunk people. I want to see waitresses and food. I wanted to see the bar in order to decadent glory. Well, you're out of luck. Today has been quite the slow day. Not that I've been surprised, given how things are going on in the streets and such. All oh, humans are a nasty bunch, that much is true. Making a ruckus, ruckus coming at each other, but that is no expect to be expected from the only mammal to kill its own. And Jin lo oh, Jin does love the number four. And she loves the number 17. He. I'm I'm a zo zoologist, but I I'm no zoologist, but I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Oh well, yeah, then give me an example, non-zoologist bartender. Like I said, I don't know the details, I just know it isn't right. Memory serves me right. Once the lion takes over pride, every cub born from another lion is killed or something. 
<laughs> takes over the pride. You can't take over pride. Pride is an intangible thing. You need to start making things up, non zoolist Zulus, just bartender. Oh, bartender, yeah. You know what I mean. <laughs> but going back on the topic, do you know what the number 17 means? Atomic number of chlorine? No, Chloe is, Chloe is a name, not a number, you know? The group where halogens are in the periodic table? Stop making up the words like halogen, periodic, and table. Okay, then I give up. Seventeen is us. Huh? Every human has seventeen pairs of chromosomes. That number is the whole foundation of you and me. It's twenty-three. What is? Humans have twenty-three pairs of chromosomes, not fourteen. Well, then they're both primal numbers. If you see, it's the same idea. Primal. Hmm. So, do you want anything else? I like a single plum floating in perfume served in a man's hat. Okay. He wants a plum floating perfume in a son of a bitch. Fedora. Plum film. Here you go. Ha! Huh, you just wait, you did. Well, enjoy. I will I'll drink this perfume. You, you don't really have to. Yes, that'd be silly. You win this round, bartender. Hey, bartender, have you ever thought about death? What? What if we were already dead, both of us? What? What tells you that I even exist before I enter this door? How can you assure me that this reality is real and we're not in fact in heaven or hell all along? What if everything is up to this point with a stupid story written by unemployed 20-somethings in his room? Wow, I could punch you to make you feel reality. Well, I don't care about that, really. Um, this reality is real for me, and that's all that matters. Oh, such a close mind away of seeing things. You need to get away from the factual facts. Open your mind to things beyond your reach. You'll never reach enlightenment if you don't start. The habanada has started! It means the twilight of the gods in German, by the way. Well, you're on your own, bartender. Oh, well, you're on your own, bartender. Enjoy your new world order! What? Ah, um, well, a couple of nearby cars exploded, it seems. Oh, hell. Let me take a look out the window. Oh, be careful. Thanks, boss. Well, I see a lot of flashes in the distance, mostly likely gunshots. Um, Jill, come here for a second. What? Use caster. About five um, gigabytes of reports proving that several white night spots have been used to cover illegal actions were released to the public by an unknown anarchist group. We're, we're receiving reports of several units going rogue and using weapons to hunt down anyone they found on the streets. Several counterterrorism forces from neighboring cities have been dispatched in order to subdue. The crazed units being a plea from the vice president. We're still waiting for a declaration from Zabasi Corp CEO on the subject, but until then, well, things are ugly in the outside of the in and outside of the bank. It seems. Um, yeah, I recommend you stay here tonight. It's too dangerous to even think about going outside. What if they break in? They won't. Even then, the bar has quite the security system, and I'd be here to protect you as an ad bonus. <sighs> yeah, I guess I'll stay tonight. I'll get you the spare mattress I have. Do you mind sleeping in my office? No, I guess it's fine. Good. <sighs> Let's hope everything gets solved by the morning. I'll have Zankutu on hand, just in case. The metal bat with nails? There's nothing it can't bash. Yeah. Sigh, Gil, four. Hope everything's better tomorrow. Guys, we did it! Day five! We did total earnings, we did drink totals, only did one mistake. What? Where was the mistake? I don't recall this. Commission, flawless service bonus. I didn't get a flawless service bonus. Wow. Today's payment, tips, total funds. I didn't get the flawless service bonus. I'm so sad. But that's okay. It'll be alright. 
You guys are hitting the seas again today. Oh, Jace done. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like. Okay, well, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna grab another drink. And then get it, like, and then we're gonna do day six. 